In this video, I'm going to show you how the relationship between the lower and upper knot of a binomial interest rate tree is established. So the binomial interest rate tree can be used to uh, determine the arbitrage free value of a fixed income security. Okay, so the binomial interest rate tree is also called the log normal tree. And the reason for that is because the interest rates are assumed to be log normally distributed. Now, in this uh, case, I'm only using a two period interest rate tree. And each interest rate that you see here is a one period forward rate. So the relationship at let's say at time one between the interest rate in the upper knot, which is denoted as R sub one H and we have R sub one L. So we can easily determine the, in the value of the interest rate in the upper knot if let's say we know the value of the interest rate in the lower knot. And the relationship here is uh, based on a multiplier and the multiplier is e to power of two sigma. And sigma here would be the volatility of the short rates. And for period two, of course, uh, we can also establish the same relationship between every adjacent knot. So of course here, if you know the value of the interest rate in R sub two, low and low, okay, then you can just take e to power of two sigma or the volatility and then uh, multiply and then you will get the value of the interest rate in not HL. Okay, and similarly, if you know the value of the interest rate for not HL, you can determine the interest rate for uh, not HH. And of course, if you have uh, any combining these two relationships, we can also establish that uh, the value of R at period two for H, H is equals to R uh, at period 2 for L, L, the lowest in the knot, multiplied by E to the power of 4 sigma. Okay, we can establish that similar relationship. So now I'm going to derive uh, this relationship here. And we're going to first start off with the holy model. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the first one. Now this is not the model that we are going to use, okay, because the holy model does not assume a log normal distribution, but we, we need it to start off. Okay, so in the holy model, the interest rate, the, uh, the dr at time t, okay, d being the, uh, the, uh, the differential, okay, and this is equals to theta, this is the time dependent drift, okay, and dt plus sigma, and then multiply by dz, okay, at time t. So anything with a subscript of t means that they are time dependent. So here the interest rate r, the short rate, is assumed to follow a normal process. Okay, so this doesn't fit our purpose because for the binomial interest rate tree, the short rates are assumed to be log normally distributed. Now, before we go into the actual distribution, the model that we want to talk about, so I want to mention that for this term dz, okay, we we'll assume that it will take on a value of positive one if interest rates were to go up. And the value of dz will be negative one if interest rate were to decrease. Okay, so this is our assumption for dz. Now, the, the model that we are going to use or we're gonna look at here is the Calote williams fabozzi model or the KWF model. Okay, so this is not in the uh, CFA program syllabus. Okay, but we need it in order to establish this relationship. Okay, so you can you can look into this further if you are interested in knowing about all these different models. Okay, so this is the KWF model. Now, uh, this model assumes a log normal distribution, right? And in this case, uh, what the only dif what the difference here would be compared to the holy model is that instead of using R here, we will use D and then the natural log of R. Okay, equals to uh, this is T D T plus sigma D Z. Okay, and sub T here. All right, so here we, instead of using just R the short rate, we will use the natural log of R. Okay, so L N here is the natural log. Now uh, we will let u be equals to the natural log of r. So in this case, the equation will turn into du sub t equals to theta t dt plus sigma dz. Okay, and using a discrete approximation. 
So we will express du sub t as u sub t plus 1 minus u sub t equals to theta t dt plus sigma dz sub t. All right, so with this, we can substitute uh, this value in. So we have the natural log of r sub t plus 1 minus the natural log of r sub t equals to theta t dt plus sigma dz t. Now, using the, uh, the relationship of the natural log, so when you have log uh, r sub t plus 1 minus log r sub t, that becomes the log of r sub t plus 1 over r sub t. Then, the val then if the r sub t plus 1 over r sub t will then be equals to the exponential of theta t dt plus sigma dz sub t. All right, so we are almost there. So in this case, uh, we will then multiply r sub t over to the other side. So in this case, we establish that r sub t plus 1 is equals to r sub t times e to power of theta t dt plus sigma dz sub t. Right, so we have the equation that we need. So in other words, this equation is telling us that the interest rate in the next period, t plus 1, will be equals to the interest rate in period t, and then multiplied by e to the power of this term here, okay, which is uh, the term that we saw in the holy model. Now we're gonna, we are then going to use this model to establish the relationship between the forward rate in r1 at time 1 and time 0 by setting t equals to 0. Right. Using the relationship that we have just uh, established, so if you look at time one, so I'll set t equals to zero. Right. So at this point, uh, if let's say the interest rate were to increase, then uh, dz will be set equals to positive one. Okay. So assuming that interest rate goes up, then we'll set dz equals to positive one. So in this formula, so we will then have R1 sub H, which is the interest rate in the upper node, and this equals to R sub 0, e to the power of theta t dt. And of course, uh, dz will be positive 1, so you have plus sigma. Okay, and if interest rate were to decline, we will set dz equals to negative 1. So that's dz equals to negative 1. So in this case, R sub 1 L, will be equals to r sub 0 equals to e to the power of theta t dt minus sigma. Now, if I were to take the interest rate in the upper knot divide by the interest rate in the lower knot, so let's call this uh, equation 1 and equation 2. So I will take equation 1 divide by equation 2, and what we'll have here is 1 sub h, okay, sub 1h over r sub 1l. And this is equals to r sub 0 e to the power of theta t dt plus sigma over r sub 0 e to the power of theta t dt minus sigma. All right, so of course uh, for r0 we can divide. Okay, we can simplify that. Now what happens to this exponential uh, term for both numerator and denominator? So in this case, uh, we have very two very similar terms here. We have theta dt on both sides and we have sigma as well but of course sigma here has a different sign so this will be equals to e to the power of theta t dt times e to the power of sigma over e to the power of theta t dt times e to the power of negative sigma so we can simplify these two terms and that will leave us with e to the power of 2 sigma so finally, we can establish the relationship between the lower and the upper knot. So r sub 1h is equals to r sub 1l times e to the power of 2 sigma. Okay, so that's the relationship between the lower and the upper knot of uh, the binomial interest rate tree. And the same thing, we can also establish uh, the relationship between the lower and upper knot for even for time 2, time 3, and so on and so forth.